Hey, good morning, everybody. So, uh, you know, last week we started off with a joke. I thought we'd do it again, eh? Hey, who likes a good joke? So, one Sunday, the pastor wakes up in the morning and he thinks, oh, don't fancy church today. Not feeling it. So, he decides he's going to phone in sick. He gets the assistant pastor to come to preach the word. No reflection on our church, I just like to say. And he decides, oh, do you know what? I quite fancy a game of golf. So he goes to a different town, knowing that there no one's going to know who he is and that, you know, really he should have been in church that Sunday morning. And he tees off and he strikes the ball and the ball flies. It's like, it's a fantastic shot. But it goes further and further. So much so that this little gust of wind just pops the ball straight into the hole. He's like, oh, fantastic. Now up in heaven, an angel turns to God and says, God, why did you allow him to do that? It's like, that's phenomenal. And God turns to the angel and says, well, who's he going to tell? <laughs> so, you know the drill. Come on, everybody. I right, hope you get, go and say hello to somebody. Tell them. Tell them that you're glad they made it. Yeah. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Boy, if you're new here, I know, sorry, it's a little bit of awkward. It's a little bit of awkward. But we like to like, get to know people. We like to be the church. We like to make good friends. It's an opportunity to talk to people that might not normally say hello to. Wonderful, wonderful. So for me, I, I wasn't always a Christian, you just, you just heard, about 16 years ago I started coming to this church and I decided to, you know, follow Jesus. And before that my life was very, very different. I mean, some of you know my story and for those of you that don't, I, I was involved in, you know, the whole, the whole drug scene and drinking and, you know, things that young men generally tend to do, rather regrettably, but that was my life. And I lived in a place called Western Supermare, working for the local Pontins. I know, it was a rock and roll lifestyle. <laughs> but this one, one place I used to frequent often was my local drug dealer's house. Now, it, it, it's an unsolved... <laughs> 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 right, right, some of you can relate, I know, I know. <laughs> But I used to go there quite often. I was the mule, if you want, for the guy on site who used to deal with the drugs out. And I'd go to this, this drug dealer's house and inevitably, every time you, you, I went there, there'd be people of different ages, of different backgrounds. You know, it, it's phenomenal that I always used to remark upon it and, and wonder about it. That you have young people there, educated people there, older people there, professional people there, unemployed people there. You'd have people from every range of the spectrum would be turning up at this place and y your social circle was kind of centred around this person's habitation. I'd love to have seen his address book, like it, it must have been like phenomenally long. But anyway, that was my life. And when I started coming to church, I noticed something. I noticed that there was young people, that there was older people, there was you know, professional people, there was unemployed people, there was people from every demographic that you could ever imagine. So welcome to the crack house everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, church, but church is that though, isn't it? And it should be that. Yeah. It, it should be open to everybody. Yeah. Absolutely anybody is welcome to come and be a, be a part here. Like we've got on the wall as you walk through the door, that you belong here. Yeah. This is a place where you can belong before you believe. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you can believe before you start to behave, even. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, and this, is, this is how we roll here. But um, what, what I wanted to say is that some of us, actually, we don't always necessarily see church in the light that maybe we'd like to. You know, maybe it's not a priority in our lives that, that we, we'd hope it to be, even. You know, it's so easy, and I get it, and I'm not here to point fingers or cast shame. I, I get it, it's so easy. Like, if I wasn't preaching this morning, I might be playing golf, you never know. Yeah. But, but it's so easy, isn't it, for us in our busy lives to get worried and that hustle and all, all of that, it just kind of 
crowds in and takes over. And, and church is great because you can hear some of the best preachers in the world, like online. Like you can hear some of the greatest worship in the world when you come here on a Sunday morning, but I'm not biased at all. But true story though, right, isn't it? You know, you can get your church fixed almost anywhere. And so this morning, I want to kind of address this question, why do people still go to church? Like in this modern world where you don't really need to go anywhere, like you can get your shopping brought to your door, you know, you can get anything that you want, you can get your kids' resources brought by Amazon, you can get your home decor sent through, you know, you can get everything brought to your door, quite literally now. Why do people even still go to church? Why is it a thing? 2,000 years of this archaic custom and practice, and it's still going strong. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not necessarily in this country, but globally, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely it is. And I want to do something about that. Yeah. I really believe that this country, we can see a strong, thriving, vibrant church once again. Yeah. But it's going to take all of us, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to take all of us. So, the local church, it has been said, the local church is the hope of the world. And I really think that that is true. I believe that completely and wholeheartedly. If we do get on board with this idea that it's going to take all of us and we can really make a difference, we can be the harbingers of hope wherever we go. You know, we talk about it often, don't we? That we've got things, we've got like the Holy Spirit inside of us and we need to bump shoulders with people and share the message of love and hope and peace that Jesus came and more importantly, the message of the kingdom of heaven yeah. that we carry with us. Mm. So I really believe that it is the hope of the world. But what do you think when you think of church? Mm. I mean, do you think of an Anglican building? You know, is this what you imagine when you think church? Or, or maybe you think of our building. <laughs> maybe that's what you think when you think church. I'd like to hope that actually, and by the end of this, I hope that you'll think of this when you think church. Yeah. Right? People together, hanging out having a good time, receiving something from heaven, kids growing up, loving the church. Do you know what, I'm going to deviate slightly from my notes, you know I like to do this occasionally. But a few years ago, before Covid and all that happened, I used to take my, my boys, we used to go to London occasionally and visit Hillsong Church. Anyone ever been to Hillsong yeah. Church? Yeah? Yeah, great place, love it. But I went there with Isaac, my eldest, when he was about seven or eight. And it's a, it's, for those of you that don't know, it's in the Dominion Theatre. So it, it packs a few people inside of it, right? And their worship really is world-class music. Like, they, they, they send out, like, records a, every year. And we all, well, a lot of us, will probably listen to those songs. So I thought, you know what, this is going to wow him. He's going to be like, wow, this is a vision of church that, that I want in my life. And afterwards, I said to him, I said, so is it? What do you prefer? Did you like this place or did you like our church better? And he said, I like our church better. And I was yeah, like, I was like, why is that? And he said, because I get to run around with my mates. Yeah. Right? But Joe, you know what a beautiful picture of what yeah. church should be. Yeah. yeah, we should just be running around with our mates, trying to make this world a better place. Mm. Go and do something about it. Anyway. Back to my notes. So originally. The church was the ecclesia, yeah? Some of you, you know this, that the word was ecclesia, and literally what that means is the called out gathering, the assembly. And so it was the, the called out, the gathering of citizens called out from their homes into some public place, an assembly, in fact, is what you'll find in the Greek lexicon dictionary. However, the word changed over time. So we call it church today, why? Well, it's come from us through the Germanic language, which used the word kircha, right? And then before that, they got that from the Greek word that was kyrios, which means a house of the Lord. Yeah. Like, quite literally, a Lord's house. Yeah. Like, think Downton Abbey, right? That would be a kyrios. Mm -hmm. And that word is the word that then got 
got used and in our English translations to mean be church. Yeah. So no wonder we think of a building or something different, but that was never the intention. Right, yeah. That was never the point. I mean, we are incredibly blessed and lucky actually to have a building, to have our own facility. Yeah. I mean, many churches across the world are meeting in like little run-down shacks or under a tree or who knows where or what. It's no less church because they don't have a a place. Amen. They are a church. They are the church. They are the gathered followers of Jesus. As we are here in this place this morning. Matthew sixteen eighteen, Jesus is talking, and this is a, a a scripture that many of us would know. And I tell you that you are Peter. I mean, that's a funny thing to say, isn't it, to someone, right? The context is his name's Simon, really, right? So, you know, makes a bit more sense there, doesn't it? Jesus is saying, right, you are Peter. Literally, you, you, are, you are a stone. That's what that means. You are a stone. And on this rock, I will build my ecclesia. Church, why? It's an ecclesia. I will build my ecclesia. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Does it kind of change the slant for us slightly, or, or not, not at all? It's curious, isn't it? I think so. The thing is, church has so much baggage surrounding it these days, doesn't it? I mean, I don't know if you've ever tried inviting people to church, or spoken to people about church where you, where you live, where you work, where you hang out. You know, and I often, you know, I'll get these pushbacks from my colleagues at work. Because many people do think that it is just a building. They don't know and understand that it is just a, a gathering of people. This is church. They think, oh, well, I'm going to go to that building over there. And if they don't like the look of that building, well, then maybe they're not going to go because it's just a building to them. It was never intended for that. We've just discussed this. Others think that it's an organisation of oppression. Now, I've heard this before. You know, the famous Karl Marx quote, that it is the opiate of the people. You know, the church is, is something that was there, brought upon in the mid, mid ages, can't speak, in the medieval ages, to like, you know, oppress the people, to squash them down, to get them to do the government, the ruling bodies bidding. Well, no, no, it's, it's meant to be like a, a place of freedom, to, to set us free from slavery of that kind. Other bits of baggage are that it's a bit of a killjoy. Yeah. Church is a place that you can't have any fun. We tell jokes in church, right? <laughs> Hilarious. Way. But I, I literally, I, I was talking to my colleagues this week and I told them, oh, do you want to hear the joke that I started off church with last week? So they all gathered round. I'm like, this has got a bit big. I didn't like, <laughs> <laughs> meant to tell a joke. So anyway, they all gathered round. And then I told them the joke that I told last week about Larry. And they all thought he was hilarious. They're like, you can't, you shouldn't do things like that in church. Well, why not? <laughs> well, why not? Church should be fun, right? Yeah. Church should be fun. They, they think it's a killjoy. Other people might think that, you know, being in church is, a, is a, an entertainment. You come to church because it's fun. Because you get to like see a band, you get to see live music, and there's that part of it, and you get to hear like, let's be honest, a great talk, you know, that's going to change your life. But that is an entertainment. It's like putting on a show on Netflix or watching a TED talk or something. Well, no. Is it a spiritual pinata? If I go to church, God's got to do what I ask Him when I pray. Like if I whack the church, say, God, look, I was in church for like the last 52 Sundays. You've got to listen to my prayers now. No. Or is it a place of social kudos? Certainly was the case 100 years ago where people respect you a bit more. They think you're a, a gooder person because you go to church on a Sunday morning. All these things are pieces of baggage that culture has picked up regarding church and what it should be and what its purpose is in the world. And the other thing as well about church is it has picked up some true criticism throughout history. 
You know, there's been all sorts of scandals surrounding the church throughout the past. I mean, we've got simony, we've got the crusades, we have sex scandals. All this happened around church. And no doubt, in some places, it probably still does. But like we've said before in this series, we don't get on board with a faith system. We don't get on board with Christianity. We don't get on board with following Jesus because of the adherence. We do it because of the founder. Yeah. We're here because of Jesus. Yeah. I don't come to church because my wife will think I'm a gooder person. You know, This is what it's about. We're here because of Jesus. And I get it and I understand that in the past, maybe some of us have had bad experiences in church. Maybe we've been hurt by the church. Maybe we've kind of been shunned by the church. Maybe the church, we feel like the church has let us down in some way. Maybe the church has made decisions that we don't fully agree with. But none of those are really the reasons that we're in church. Or at least I hope they shouldn't be. The reason that we're in church is because of this man Jesus, who we've talked about a few weeks ago, who was the Messiah, who came and he lived his life and he showed us through his example how to live life. But then he died for us. We've just celebrated it with communion. And that was for us. A perfect act from a perfect man. And then he died. But he beat death. And sin, so that we could have eternal life yeah. in the presence of God. Oh man, Hallelujah. church is a place to celebrate that, yeah. right? So, so, what are some of the roles of the church in real life? Well, worship is one of the, the big ones, isn't it? Yeah. You know, in the book of Acts. Chapter 24, Luke writes, However, I admit that I worship the God of our ancestors as a follower of the way, actually he's quoting Paul, which they call a sect. I believe everything that is in accordance with the law, and that is written in the prophets. And I have the same hope in God as these men themselves have, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. I admit that I worship the God of our ancestors. Where, where's he saying this? He's, He's in a gathering of people. Yeah. The gathering is where we worship God because of what he's done, yeah. because of who he is. It's where we sing songs like this amazing grace. Who saved a wretch like me? Now, no one says words like that in the modern language, do they? I mean, we don't, none of us go around saying, oh, I'm such a wretch. <laughs> Maybe you do, I don't know. But, but this is it, this is the point. This is the principle behind it, that we're like, do you know what? My life would not be where it is now if it wasn't for God. Yeah. And so I just say, you know, I thank you, God. I, I, I love you. I, I worship you. You are worth my time. Amen. You are worth my life. Yeah, it's worth it yeah. because of who you are and what you've done. We come to church also to practice the spiritual disciplines. In Acts again, they all join together, Acts chapter 1, they all join together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Now that's a much bigger statement than we've got time to get into, but, but along with the women is just huge for that time. Yeah. Again, the church is for everybody. Everybody yeah. is welcome. But I would pray together, they join together in prayer and do you know what, uh, about bone of contention so prayer meetings are like the, the least attended service in a church has anybody noticed that? Yeah. oh man, if I said it was a pizza night, everyone would turn up yeah. you know, starts with a P but a totally different outcome we want prayer meetings to be a thriving hub of who we are yeah. it, it's where things happen that stuff gets done. Like we talked about last week. Prayer does something to us and in us. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. We come to church for discipleship. To be disciplined. Right? But Matthew 28. Jesus says, Therefore go and make disciples 
of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. We're to go and make disciples. We're to go and make people disciplined in the way. Uh, and what does that look like? Well, sometimes it looks like an uncomfortable conversation. Sometimes it looks like some preaching on a Sunday morning. Sometimes it looks like being a part of a small group, of a connect group, where you share life and you dig a bit deeper into stuff and then you realise, oh, actually, actually, I need to stop doing these things because actually they're, they're no good for my life and the people around me. So I need to lay that down for something better. It might be harder, but it's better. One of my favourite quotes is from a guy called Jim Rohn, a business leader, and he says that you either face the pain of regret or the pain of discipline. Mm. Which one are you going to choose? We come to church for the fellowship, for the hanging out. Fellowship, again, is another word we don't use, isn't it? Why, why are there so many words we don't use? But it's a good word. It's a word that we should use. It's kind of lost its meaning in the modern world. But the fellowship is like the band of brothers. It's like, oh, we're not just, we're not just mates. We're in fellowship. I couldn't tell you what the root of the word is, although I love that kind of thing, but, but I imagine that, that we are just like kind of linking arms, marching together to achieve a common goal and purpose. This is fellowship. In Acts 2.42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to prayer. I mean, they devoted themselves to it. Like, what would that look like in our world for us to be devoted to something like that? I mean, in fact, it is, it's part of our mission statement on the wall to be a church of authentic disciples devoted to God and loving people. What does devotion look like? We come to church for service, right? Service in Romans 15. Now, however, I am on my way, Paul writes, to Jerusalem in the service of the Lord's people there. We come to church to serve one another. Now, we're going to have a bring and share meal afterwards. Now, there's people sorting that out for us now in service of us. People set out these chairs this morning in service of you. People have prepared communion, like Pastor Tony prepared a, a communion topic to talk about in service of you. There are people taking photographs and doing video for us in, in service of you, so that through the week we get to remind ourselves of what Sunday was all about, the things that we've learned, the things that we did, who we are as a people. Uh, and lastly, evangelism. Mark 16, 15, Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Now, evangelism is one of those scary words, isn't it? Like We hear a word like evangelism in church, we're like, oh, yes, uh, awkward. But it's, it's literally living your life openly in front of people. Amen. Being a witness. Being unashamed and unafraid of Jesus in your life. What are you doing this Sunday? Oh, I'm going to watch the football. Well, before that, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to hear a great message. And then I'm going to watch the football. This is how we live our life, isn't it? Unashamed and unafraid. Amen. Talking of Jesus and his kingdom. So those are some of the roles that the church plays in society, in our lives, hopefully, as well. But did you know that there are actually loads of studies being done on people that attend church and the benefits that we get as regular church attenders? So if the spiritual stuff didn't hook you and grab you, hopefully this will. So the benefits of church. It's a lot of reading here, so bear with me, but it's good stuff. The strength of the family unit is intertwined with the practice of religion. Churchgoers are more likely to be married, less likely to be divorced or single, and more likely to manifest high levels of satisfaction in marriage. Good news for all you who's married, isn't it? 
Church attendance is the most important predictor of marital stability and happiness. The regular practice of religion helps poor persons move out of poverty. Regular church attendance, for example, is particularly instrumental in helping young people to escape the poverty of inner city life. Religious belief and practice contribute substantially to the formation of personal moral criteria and sound moral judgment. Regular religious practice generally inoculates individuals against a host of social problems, including suicide, drug abuse, out of wedlock births, crime and divorce. The regular practice of religion also encourages such beneficial effects on mental health as less depression, more self-esteem and greater family and marital happiness. In repairing damage caused by alcoholism, drug addiction and marital breakdown, religious belief and practice are a major source of strength and recovery. Regular practice of religion is good for personal, physical health. It increases longevity, improves one's chances of recovery from illness and lessens the incidence of many killer diseases. Amen. That's phenomenal, isn't it? So who says that church is bad for you? <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Like, for all the ills of the church in the past that we've talked about a little bit, it's got to be a good thing to have in your life, isn't it? Amen. It's got to be. 81% of these studies showed the positive benefit of religious practice. 15% showed neutral effects. And only 4% showed harm. Isn't that completely bonkers? 81%. Four-fifths of like all of the studies done on church attendance and what the outcomes of it are are like, do you know what? It's, a, it's good. Go with it. Brilliant. So if you've got loads of friends that, that don't go to church, tell them it's good for them. Invite them along. Come on. You're feeling rough? Come to church. It's a good time. So for me... I want to see the church that all it's called to be. Like, I, I really do. I, I want us to be a, a church that just steps up, that takes ground for the kingdom, that is going through the gears, that's going to do a new thing. I talked about this last week. And Pastor Tony talked about it the week before. And I think we should keep talking about it. Because we need to instill this truth in our hearts and our lives. That we are together going to be a people that are going to make a change in our town, yeah. in our communities, yeah. for the better, for the good. Yeah. We're not going to do it to be like, oh, look at us, give ourselves a pat on the back. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not what we want to do it for. We want to do it because people's lives will be transformed and changed. Yeah. I mean, I'm an example of the good work of this church in this town. My life is completely and radically different from where I was to where I am now. I'm unrecognisable. Yeah. Unrecognisable. Yeah. And I know that some of you share a similar testimony of people that look at your lives and they're like, wow, you've changed. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's better. Yeah. And we want this for more people. Yeah. There are, I don't know how many, but I would be willing to bet there are hundreds of people in our town that are on the cusp of some sort of addiction, that are on the cusp of some sort of enslavement, that are on the cusp of who knows what, going into a pit, whatever that pit might look like. Their marriages are on the brink, their relationship with their children is on the edge. Who knows? Who knows what people's lives are actually going on behind closed doors? But I am willing to bet there are hundreds, if not thousands of people, right there, right on the precipice, don't know where to turn to next, feeling lost and lonely and dejected, feeling like life isn't worth living, but I've got to put on a brave face, I've got to go to work, I've got to show that I'm okay, because otherwise my friends will just flick me off like a dirty scab. I've been there. Yeah. I'm guessing some of you have been there too and know what it feels like. And I want to reach out to people before they get to that place. Yeah.
before they get to that place. But so often people's lives are so busy, and they've got so much worry, that they just don't know what the best thing to do is. They haven't got time for a Sunday morning. They haven't got time to come and be a part of a connect group during the week. They haven't got time just to sacrifice a little bit for a greater investment in their own lives. I want to be a church that is the vehicle for God's justice and his wisdom to come into the world in which we live in. To be a voice against evil and slavery. To be a people that will move in those directions. Yes, we have AA meetings here. I'd love to see that expand and grow. I'd love to see more work like that happen. To see people finding healing. By his stripes, we are healed, right? And this is it. So many are just beaten and broken and hunched over. I don't know what to do. But we need to work. We need to step up. We need to be together. We need to be united in our efforts. We need to work so that the Spirit of God can grow His church. And the gates of Hades can't touch us. If we work hard, if we do all that we're called to do, if we be the people that we're called to be, God can move mightily in and through us and make a difference where we are, in your local communities, in your neighbourhoods, in your workplaces, wherever it is that God's put you. Let's be a united people. I'm going to finish now with a long bit of scripture. But I hope that the words of Paul here seep into us and help us to see more clearly the church, the ecclesia, the gathering of those who follow Jesus. In Romans 12, Paul writes, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, So in Christ we, though many, form one body and each member belongs to all the others. You are not your own. You are not your own. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, well then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, well then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. 
Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of a low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you. Live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And if we, my friends, can do this, we are on the right path. We will be his ecclesia. We will be able to step forth out of this place and show the world what it is to be Jesus followers and make this world a better place in doing so. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the gathering of your people. We thank you that we get to be here, that we get to just worship, that we get to serve, we get to love one another, we get to honour one another, we get to just be in your presence and in each other's presence and be your people, God. I pray, Father, that this word that's come out today will just be a seed in someone's heart and that, Lord, you'll just water that and grow that seed. Allow it to flourish in someone's life. That they will have a greater desire to be your church and not just come to church. They'll have a greater desire to fellowship with each other and not just be Facebook friends. Who have a greater desire to just step out and speak truth and be unashamed and unafraid because we've got people that have got our back. We can be all that you want us to be, Lord. Just give us the courage and the wisdom that we need to step out in faith and live this life as you would us have us. Amen. 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 Hey, so God bless you guys. We, we are going to grab some tea and coffee and hang out, have some fellowship, right?